Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today we're going to be painting Irish Hillside Cottage and I'm going to be sipping on a little Cabernet Sauvignon and I'm excited to tell you that there's an actual reason why I'm painting this one today. So a few years ago I took a DNA test and discovered that I was part Irish. So I decided that it would be fun to go to Ireland. When I was there I tried a few times to do an open air painting as part of my Around the World open air series. I made it through only one painting outside, which turned out okay, and I might actually launch it in the future. But I tried other times as well, and it was just windy and rainy, and the conditions were just never right. But I did take some great photographs, and this scene, it's inspired by one of the photos that I took when I was there. So I just thought it would be neat to tell you a little bit of the backstory about why I chose this particular painting to do today. So, let's get painting, let's get sipping. All right, so today I'm gonna to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch that up if you'd like, but that's the size I'm gonna be using. I will be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, green oxide. This is a uh, deep yellow, fire red, and Mars Black, and of course you can switch those up, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using three brushes today. I've got a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush, and I'm gonna to refer to them as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes, and you'll also need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below the video, I'm gonna provide you with a few things. One of them is a link where you can purchase this entire kit. Um, it has the exact materials that I am using uh, and it's convenient and it's affordable and all that good stuff. So that's down there. There's also a uh, link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use that as reference as you go along as a visual reference. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions that you can also print um, and use through the painting process. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the first step is we're painting the sky. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush and I'm gonna be using blue and white paint. And I'm gonna bring my sky down about two inches. Um, and someone once taught me a really long time ago that if you don't have a ruler, you can kind of use your knuckle and it's kind of an inch. I mean, I know all of our hands are different sizes, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it with my knuckle. So I'm gonna put blue and white paint on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna go one knuckle, two knuckles, and I'm gonna make myself a mark. And then I'm gonna use my brush as a ruler. And I'm gonna measure just to make sure that I kind of have a similar mark on the other side. I'm gonna measure it that way. I'm gonna to come to the right hand side and I'm gonna make a mark right about the same height. So now I know that's about as far down as I want my sky to go. And I just reloaded my brush to make sure I have enough blue and white paint. I'm gonna start by painting up at the top uh, edge of my canvas. That way I know kind of what color I'm getting and I like to paint the edges of my canvas. And then as I get into my sky, I'm gonna be applying it with a circular motion using the tip of my brush. And for me, I know that this is pretty dark, so I'm not gonna pick up blue paint again. All I'm gonna do is pick up white paint because I want my sky to get lighter and lighter as it comes down. So I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up white paint. And what's gonna happen is my sky will get lighter and lighter as it comes down towards my horizon. And we're not going very far down our canvas, so you don't have, you might not have much of a gradient coming down, um, and that's okay. If your sky ends up one solid blue, just you know, imagine it to be a beautiful summer Irish day, and it can be as 
bright and you know solid as you want it to be. Um, for me, I'm going to attempt to get this horizon to be a little bit lighter, and then I'm just kind of lightly doing these circles up into the sky, and it might resemble little clouds kind of just floating by, um, or you might, again, just have yours nice and solid. Whatever it is, it's def definitely going to look like a nice summer, summer bright day, and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. So I'm just making sure I bring my whole horizon down here. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line, but I just wanna make sure I've got it all down there. And then I'm gonna wash and dry that big brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be painting next is the water. We're gonna be using our big brush, big bristle brush. We're gonna be using brown, blue, and white. And we're going to be doing a horizon line and we also have got to separate our land from our water. So we're gonna make a couple of dots and then we're gonna connect those dots. So I want you to put brown and blue on your brush at the same time. So we're gonna put brown and blue on our brush at the same time. On the bottom left hand side of my canvas, I'm gonna come up about two inches and you guys know how to do that at this point with that knuckle of yours and I'm just gonna make a mark. On the right hand side, I'm gonna come up about halfway between my horizon line and the bottom of my canvas. So you just pick what looks to be to you the halfway point and you're gonna make yourself a mark. And then I'm gonna connect these two marks. I don't want my line to be really thick. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of lightly make this line with my brush. I want it to kind of do almost like a couple of slopes or bumps. So I'm gonna kind of come down like this and then maybe I'll go back up and something like that. And you can see I have a very faint line. That way it's not hard to paint over later. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two dots on the top left corner. Um, I still have blue and brown on my brush and I we're gonna make our horizon line. I need the entire line to be within the sky. So if you have areas that are kind of unpainted or are in that sky that are unpainted, that's kind of the high point and where you need your line to go. So I would eyeball wherever that high point is and just kind of come to the left and make yourself a mark. And then you can use your fancy ruler to mark it or check how high it is or low it is and of course come and do it on the same side. It's probably gonna be very similar to those first marks, but sometimes it shifts a little. That's why I like to double check it. And now I'm gonna make my horizon line without using a ruler. How I'm gonna do this is I'm using that blue and brown, but my trick here is I'm gonna take my brush and I squish it in the side of my palette. And what's gonna happen here is because I've squished it with a good amount of paint, my bristles come together and it makes it for an easier way to do one of these lines with a big brush. And the next tip that I'm gonna give you is, of course, you're gonna be connecting these two dots. You go fast and you keep your eye on the prize, which is the other dot. So if you could go right to left or left to right, whatever way you want. And if you run out of paint, don't worry about it. You can always add more paint. So here I go, I'm gonna start at the right and I kind of rest my hand on my canvas and I push my brush into my canvas like this, my bristles, I push my bristles into my canvas and I'm keeping my eye on my prize, which is the other dot. I'm gonna reload my paint just so I have enough to go all the way across. You could run out, that would be fine. And then once you have it on there, you can just do any minimal adjustments that you feel that you need. And now that I have my horizon line, I'm gonna paint the rest of my water with brown, blue, and white. And I am gonna get my water to be lighter as it comes down. So I'm gonna use a left to right brush stroke. I don't wash my brush. And every time I pick up paint, I'm gonna pick up kind of a different combination. So I started with just brown and white, or excuse me, brown and blue on my brush. The next time I picked up paint, I picked up um, blue and white. And I didn't wash my brush in between. Now I'm gonna pick up probably all three, brown, blue, and white. 
So this way, it gives it more of a natural tone to it. Um, this is meant to represent Ireland, and Ireland has a lot of rain, and sometimes that rain has a tendency to make the, the water look kind of dark and murky, um, so it might have had, you know, some, I don't know, waves that had just come by, but I, or dirt that's been brought into it, so I really like to see the natural tones in the, um, in the water, but as I'm coming down, which the brown does, but as I'm coming down towards the land, I'm going to start using more white. And if it turns too blue on you, you can certainly just pick up a little bit more of that brown color and that'll make it turn into a nice soft kind of blue. Um, again, a more natural one. And when you get to the, to your land line, you, you don't want to paint it like it's waves going over the land. You want to continue that left to right brush stroke. Even if you bump into that land, that's fine. The left to right brush stroke is going to look a little bit more natural than if you were to just paint around the hill. So keep that left to right brush stroke. You're going to want to get this entire area covered in. And if you can get it lighter and lighter as it comes down towards that land, it's going to make it look like there's a little bit more sunshine in the water or maybe there's, you know, white caps that are coming, coming to the land area. Um, but this definitely gives it a little bit more natural of a look if you've got it dark at the top and then light at the bottom. And I'm just going back over, making sure that I've got it nice and blended and that I'm just kind of painting out any really thick spots. And then we are gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this all painted in, you can, I have a bristle that's attacking my canvas. Um, once you've got this all done, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our grass on this big main land area. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using mostly green and yellow, but I'll also be using white and brown. And I'm gonna be applying my paint with a dotting technique. I don't wash my brush and I'll, I alternate colors. So I'm gonna start with green and I'm just gonna dot chaotically throughout my land. I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I'm gonna start dotting chaotically through my land. Oops, I picked up green and yellow that time. And I primarily am gonna use yellow and green to cover the majority of the land before I start to use white and brown. And the reason I do that is because I know if I don't properly control myself, the white and the brown ha run the risk of kind of muddling all of my paint and making it um, kind of murky looking. So I want this to look like really bright, vibrant grass. So I'm gonna wait until I get the, the green and the yellow dispersed pretty much through the whole thing. And then I'll start adding a little bit of brown because you need to have dirt in your grass and a little bit of white because that's gonna add some extra sunshine to my grass. You do want to make sure that you go all the way up and cover that outline. So if you still have that outline, just make sure that you cover it up. Um, and we are going to have additional things on this grassy land. So know that you don't have to get it 100%. Um, but I mean, this is meant to be just kind of a wild meadow out in the middle of, a, you know, a field in Ireland. And there's going to be sheep on it. Maybe yours is going to have goats or I don't know what other things are in Ireland feel so we've got sheep and goats maybe some wild horses maybe some cows they've got all kinds of stuff so right now I'm adding a little bit of white here and there in a minute I'm gonna start adding a little bit of brown but you can see I'm not smashing my brush too too hard especially when I get to the white I'm just adding this white as like little speckles think of it like the blades of grass you're just gonna kind of see those little tips of the grass 
and I'm making sure that the edges are kind of messy so maybe it looks like it hasn't been mowed in a while. Um, now I'm going to add a touch of brown. That's going to add the dirt inside my grass. And if yours, you know, starts to, you know, get too blended, just bring some of the green back, bring some of the yellow back. Um, but if you can get it to, to look nice and kind of diverse with the light spots and the dark spots, then you've done your job. And I think that mine's looking pretty good. So I am going to call it on this. Um, so we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you get done your grass, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our islands. We're gonna be using our big bristle brush and the colors we're gonna be using are predominantly green and yellow, but you'll also use brown and white. So we're gonna use the same colors that we use for our grass. Um, so I just wanna caution you, you do wanna make sure that your canvas is actually dry, your water and your sky are dry before you do this step. Before you do this step. So you can accomplish that a couple of different ways. One, just you know, take a break and, and sip some more. <laughs> or two, you can grab a blow dryer and just blow dry it if it's not dry. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you make a couple of markers and or I'll make a couple of markers and we're, those are going to kind of um, tell us where our land is going to go. We're going to have a little island back here which is just a sliver of land. So I'm just going to take green and yellow on my brush at the same time um, just so I can kind of make my markers and then um, once we make our markers, then I'll show you how to color them in. So I'm gonna have this a little bit to the right of the center of my canvas. So if this, I'm just kind of eyeballing this to be the center, I'm gonna go maybe about an inch to the right and make a dot right at my horizon line. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the other side and make another dot. So that's gonna be the width of that particular island. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and make another dot. I'm going to come over on the left hand side about halfway between the top of my canvas and my horizon line and make a dot. Then I'm going to go about halfway between my horizon line and my grass line and make a dot. So now I've got four dots. These top two are gonna be my, my little island that's gonna be at the um, horizon line. And then this one to this one is gonna create the top as well as like a little peninsula area for this big island. And then the bottom is gonna create uh, the bottom and then there's another little peninsula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really just kind of do an outline for the big one, I will do my first pass on the small one so you can see where it goes. But when I go to do the big one, I'm gonna kind of do an outline and then I'll show you how to color it in. So I'm just gonna use green and yellow to start. So green and yellow, when I do this little um, island back here, I don't wanna have a really um, straight top, so I'm gonna make it kind of uneven. And I don't really care what happens at the bottom because we're gonna come through later and clean that up with like a little beachy area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of push my brush and make these little different heights in the top. And I don't um, hit my brush a hundred times, so this way in the same spot, so this way I have different shades of the green and the yellow as it's coming off of my brush without um, mixing it all into one color. So that's gonna be the start of that island. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of what I was saying, an outline for this one. So I know I have this little peninsula kind of area. So I'm really just, again, I'm still just using green and white. I'm gonna kind of just wiggle my brush a little bit to get this in through here. I want it to come almost to the edge of my island in through here before I start coming up. So maybe about an inch before this island ends, that's when you wanna start kind of angling it up. Once you clear your horizon line, that's when you can kind of start to almost just give it some slopey kind of motion 
to meet this dot up and through here. Then what I'm gonna do is right about at this point here, that's where my little inlet is gonna come out. So I'm just gonna kind of make myself a little piece of land that just kind of sticks out there. And then I'm gonna come back here and then I'm gonna to start to kind of slope this down. If you can get a little bit of a curve here, that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. So that's the outline of it. Now I've gotta color it in. So to color it in, I want it a little bit lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So you can utilize your green and brown at the bottom. Now what's inevitably gonna happen is you're gonna see some of the blue showing through, and that is perfect because what happens when um, pieces of land get farther and farther away is we're not able to see certain colors as well. So mountains and hills and stuff off in the distance tend to be a little bit bluer or purplier. Um, so when you, if you see some of this blue underneath, that's great. It's just gonna add that extra element of um, like atmospheric dimension. So I've got green and brown on my brush. I'm gonna just kind of do a light almost like swirly kind of motion. You could dot it and make it thick looking like this, like lush like that if you want to. Um, but so whatever kind of brush stroke works for you, I like seeing that blue underneath. The only challenge is when you get to this horizon line, how do you cover it? So I do add a little bit extra white when I get to that horizon line. That's gonna help me hide that particular section of the um of the of the hill and i'm just going to kind of keep going until i get the entire both areas um painted in and you know you can picture these to be super lush because in ireland you know, as i mentioned earlier it rains a lot so what happens is is the skies might be dark the waters might be dark but the grass is really bright and green so you can make yours as dark as you want or as lush as you want. Um, the greener, the better, the more it's gonna look just like them Ireland hills. And they roll and they, you know, these hills, they, again, they have all kinds of crops or vegetation or flowers because they're so fertile because there's so much darn rain that happens. Um, so definitely, you know, have fun with these hills. You can, again, make some light spots or some dark spots. They're, they do have um, what they call, I think they're referred to as patchwork hills. So with the, all the different crops that they make, what ends up happening on some of these hills, it, they look like quilts because they are almost like squares of different colors, which we're not gonna attempt that in this short of atmosphere, but if you, if you, you know, were, you know, wanting to add some extra special something to it, you could certainly do that. And I'm going to make sure I get this edge nice and light. So I added a little bit extra green and, or an extra little yellow and white to my brush. And I'm gonna get the tip of this one to be nice and bright. So again, I'm trying to get the tops dark or lighter and the bottoms darker. So that's where the um, yellow and white is coming into play at the top and then I'll use a little bit of brown at the bottom. Um, and again, we will be adding um, a shadow and a beachy area in a little while. So if yours don't get perfect at the bottom, don't worry about that. And then we are going to switch brushes to our medium brush. So that medium uh, round brush. So once you've got your little inlet and your island, you can put this big brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first um, step to our cottage. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, brown, and yellow. And I'm gonna be just giving you some markers and we're gonna connect the markers with some shapes. And then by the time we're done outlining it, we're gonna have the shape of a cottage that could be the house for a shepherd or a farmer or even a leprechaun. Yeehaw! So you make it, you can imagine it, anybody living in there. So I'm gonna be um, making my outline with black and white on my brush. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of white, a little bit of black. I do spin my brush on the side of my palette 
um, to make it nice and pointy. But if if your lines don't come out skinny, don't worry about it because we're going to be painting over them anyways. So the first line that I'm going to make is a vertical line. I'm going to come to about the halfway point of my canvas and I'm going to travel down and I'm going to go about halfway between my island and my land and I'm going to make a vertical line from that point down to my land. And again, doesn't matter if your line is perfect, doesn't matter if it's light or dark, we're going to be making a stone building so it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to go about halfway between this line and the left side of my canvas, so maybe somewhere about here, and I'm going to make another vertical line that's about the same height as that. Then I'm going to connect the top of those two. And if it ends up being a little bit at an angle, don't worry, we're going to be giving the, it the illusion of uh, a little bit of perspective later anyways. Then I'm going to go over to the right from this, maybe about two inches or so. I'm going to make myself another vertical line. Now I'm going to connect, I guess that could be a little taller. I'm going to connect these two with a, I don't know what to call this, like a Humpty Dump. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of um, it I'm gonna curve this corner and then I make a bump and then I curve it again I have no idea what this is called <laughs> it's a strange roof line for a thatched roof cottage so the way that I do it so I kind of get it even is I'm going to kind of eyeball the center point between these two and then just go up maybe about an inch. That's going to be my center. So then I will kind of go down and then hump it. So that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Sorry. Too many sips for me now. Down and then hump it. Sorry. No kids are watching this, I'm sure. Down and then a little hump. So that's what I'm gonna do for that one. So now this roof line on the tail end of it is gonna be covered by the thatching of the actual roof. So, but we need, we need a line to give us some kind of idea where this is gonna go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the right of this, maybe about an inch or so, and I'm gonna go straight up and I want it to be a little bit taller than this one. It doesn't have to be a lot taller, but maybe just a little bit. I think this is good. And then I'm going to connect these two, the top of here, with that mark that I just made. And then I'm just going to give this a curve because it really doesn't matter what this rear end looks like because you're going to be um, covering it in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in this section and this section with black, white, and brown dots. So I'm going to just pick up black, white, and brown, and I'm just going to start dotting it. You might at some point pick up, oops, I have a little yellow on my brush, pick up more white. Maybe you pick up more black. I alternate colors. You want to go right down to that grass. We're making it look like it's just like some kind of stucco-y stone. Um, maybe it's masoned rocks put together. Um, I'm going to make this side a little bit darker than this side just to give it visual perspective. Um, you could certainly make this side darker than this side. It doesn't matter as long as you can try and get one side lighter or darker than the other side. And you do want to hide your water color, the blue underneath. So just kind of keep speckling or keep dotting until you've got the entire area covered. You also want to cover your outlines. So if um, you have a very prominent white line on the edge, just make sure that you've dotted it accordingly. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this side. I think I'm going to get this one a little bit lighter. So I'm using more white, especially where it touches the corner of the building. And I'm just making these dots. There's nothing fancy about this. I, the only thing that I can recommend is you don't need to over dot. So just dot to cover, don't dot to blend, if that makes any sense. It makes sense in my head. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going until I've got this entire area covered. I'm gonna go right up to the edge here. And again, the colors I'm using are 
brown, black, and white, and I getting this back corner a little bit darker, which totally works fine. Um, as long as, again, the transition from one side to the other, you can see the difference between the colors. And then as soon as I get this side done, I'm gonna move right into my thatched roof. And how I'm gonna do that is instead of dots, I'm gonna be using curved stripes. So I don't wash my brush, but if you feel like you're overloaded and you're not quite sure what to do, you can certainly just wipe it on your paper towel. And my goal here is to have this thatching, or it's like straw material, cover the, this edge. And for me, I'm gonna give it a little bit of perspective. So I already have a little bit of an angle here. If I can get my thatching to also be at an angle, that's great. So how I'm gonna start it is I'm putting brown, yellow, and white on my brush. And I'm gonna give myself kind of this nice, kind of clean line up at the top. Well, something like that. And then this is the only tricky corner right here. You can certainly work your way around it so you can still see the design work. But as soon as you start to hit the building itself, that's when you wanna do these really kind of curvy lines. And again, I don't overpaint it. I just picked up black. So right now I'm gonna do some black pieces of the thatching or the straw. And if you go about this and at some point you're like, oh, everything's blending together, it's just not working, then you can either dry your canvas and just continue right now or wait till later and get a layer on now and then come back, at, you, know, in, in the, you know, at a later moment and you can finish up with additional layers. But if you use a lot of paint on your brush and you don't, over paint, which would mean um, painting in the same spot 76 times, then you should be able to accomplish this really kind of textured look that I have going here. And again, if, if it gives you any, any problem because it's so wet, you can certainly either you know come back or you can certainly dry your canvas now and I just kind of keep going until I feel like I've accomplished a good look here. I think I'm gonna just even up this little rooftop, the little edge of it, and maybe put a little bit more brown on here. And you can, you know, have fun with these colors. Maybe you want yours a little bit more brown or a little bit more yellow, you know. It's just meant to look like straw or hay or something of that nature, so. Just adding a little bit more black over on this side so you can see the length of it over here. And then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your thatched roof on here, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our islands. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, and the colors I'm using are black, brown, yellow, and white. And think of this as we are making like a little beachy area or the, the land that's gonna hit the, hit the water. And in this particular um, scenery, it's gonna, our land is gonna have a little bit of shadow underneath it because maybe it's like rocks or, you know, something that's not a lush, you know, tropical beachy area. This is rainy, rocky sea. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of brown and black on my brush at the same time. This is gonna kind of get the party started. And I'm gonna put a shadow at the bottom of my, um, hills, I'm just rubbing my brush and I'm going to put it in the water too. So I'm really just kind of rubbing these colors onto the canvas. Um, if you go too dark, I just picked up a little bit of green that will help to neutralize things for you if you feel like, um, which I didn't tell you, you could use green, but you certainly can. And I'm just kind of darkening the bottom of the hill and then putting a little bit of a shadow underneath the hill. And we're gonna turn this bottom, oops, where'd that come from? That was a little bit of red on my brush. We'll just wipe that away. Um, my red is next to my black, obviously, on my palette. Um, but we're gonna put almost like a beachy 
not a real beach, but um, some sandy area right um, between here. So I'm just getting the dark on first and I'm using very little bit of paint and I'm just kind of rubbing it onto the canvas um, with the you know tip or the you know little bit of the side of my brush but it's okay if you blend it into that water a little bit that's going to make it look even more natural like there's little rocks or something underneath the surface there and I'm going to do the same thing so this one I got the hill a little bit darker these two I'm just going to put a shadow underneath um, the the entire piece of land I'm not going to worry about shadowing the bottom of the the hill it's just as it hits the land that's where I'm putting this little bit of a of a shadow and if you you know feel you go too far into the water don't worry about it that's just going to add to the illusion here I'm going to do the same thing up top this one maybe I'm going to use a little bit more brown as opposed to black maybe this is a little bit more in the sunshine if there is any sunshine in Ireland there is. There's sunshine for about three minutes once a month. <laughs> but they, they definitely make up for it in other ways. They have great beer, they have great flowers, they have great grass. <laughs> so they definitely make up for the lack of sunshine in other ways. And now what I'm doing, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on, on my paper towel and I'm gonna put in like a little beachy area, which is gonna be mostly white. You can pre-mix a color if you want to, but I'm going to be using white, yellow, and brown. So you could pre-mix yourself a little creamy tan color, or you could just let it happen on your canvas. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. And then I'm just kind of maneuvering my brush along this um, bottom of the land area in order to give it almost like a... I don't want to call it a sandy look, but kind of like a dirty, maybe there's some rocks down there. It gives the land almost like a little, what I would refer to as like a lip at the edge of it, um, where that land is just kind of hovering over the water. Um, you could get this to be really um, prominent or just kind of subtle. Whatever works for you visually is totally fine. Um, and if you can kind of uh, make the color not consistent the whole way, that's going to also add to um, a more realistic look to it. I'm going to do a little bit more up here. And if you needed to use your small brush, you could certainly do that. I'm totally got some paint on my hand which is getting into my ocean water right now which I will clean up in a little bit but you can see I'm just kind of almost wiggling my brush at the um, tiny bottom of this little island just to give it the illusion that there's a little bit of a land you know a landing area so to speak and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've, you know, conquered this, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're making some sheep. We're going to be using our medium brush. Uh, the colors I'm using are black and white. So how I'm going to do this is these are... Um, Consider them to just be representational. <laughs> Don't consider them to be looking like photorealistic sheep. Um, I'm going to be using black and white on my brush at the same time. I'm going to have, um, you can have as many as you want. You can have them in whatever direction you want. Um, I'm going to make one or two over here just to show you how um, to do it. And then I'm going to make a, a whole bunch of them kind of in a fast way. My first um, thing that I do is I'm almost just making myself like a little cotton ball look. Just a little puff ball. I'm just dotting white and black. I'm going to make them different sizes. Maybe this one has a little bit more white on it so it doesn't look too dirty. And then I'm going to take and wipe my brush and my paper towel and I'm going to pick up just black for the mouth or for the face and any legs that you want. So all the face is is like a little um, triangle that faces the the grass. If you want legs you can certainly put 
a couple of tiny little legs but just you know make sure they're smaller than your face you could even put your face like in the middle so you could put like something like that and then you don't even see the legs um, and you can put them all over the place it's going to tell the viewer that it's a sheep because it's you've got the the body there um, just a white fluffy body and then a black face so I'm going to do a couple more over here I do want to make sure I have enough white that one was a little too black you can even cross it over above your your horizon line there or your grass line maybe I'll put one over here you do want to make sure before you start this step though that your grass is dry so if your grass is a little wet just again blow dry it if you have to um, or you know just take a little bit of a break I'm gonna you can have these as big as you want or as small as you want the it would make sense if they as they get closer to the bottom of your canvas those would be naturally the bigger ones because they're closer to you um, or closer to the viewer so I'm just kind of getting mine on here and then I will go back and do my faces and my legs I'm just making sure I've got you know a good assortment here and they're different sizes you could wash and dry your brush like I just did or just wipe it on your paper towel now I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna do this little face here I've got all of mine just grazing um, maybe your maybe you have your head up um, but they're definitely a little bit easier to do with you know just grazing it's a nice simple little brush stroke to get them on here I'll, I'll do some legs in a minute but just kind of kind of get my my heads on here and if you feel that the this brush is too big for you to do um, this little tiny detail you could certainly switch brushes to the small one um, then I'm going to do a couple of little tiny legs maybe this one's got a couple of little tiny legs here and then we are going to use the same brush for the next step so once you get all of your little sheep on here you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're doing for the next step is we're doing flower stems um, I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using brown and white I want to have flowers all along like the edge of my hill here and I also want to have some at the bottom well, I want to have them everywhere, but um, those are my dominant places where I'm going to put these flower stems. So I'm going to put brown and white on my brush at the same time, and I'm really just going to sit here and flick it up. I'm even going to put some in front of my cottage, so you can go ahead and put some right in front of there. You might not really be able to see it terribly a lot, but you know, just so you have something there for when we do go to put our flowers um, it really helps to make this um, edge of the hill kind of pop out but you don't just have to put them at the edge of the hill so what I'm gonna do is now that I've got them at the edge of the hill I do want them kind of dispersed throughout my grass um, but they don't need to dominate the space so this is just to give um, when I do have my bigger flowers down at the bottom this is to give them some kind of you know stem to to sit on maybe um, but you're giving it perspective when you do the little ones up at the top and big ones down at the bottom um, and then if you can in the middle intersperse some various other sizes that's great you can also put some you know surrounding your little sheep that will help to you know make them so they're not just floating on your grass um, but really once we put all the flowers and stuff in there nobody's going to think that your sheep are floating um, and then once I get done with this step I'm going to switch brushes to my small brush so I'm just getting a couple more pieces of these stems on here I really like to have them right around that building um, and then I will put this brush away in my water cup and take out my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is the second step on our cottage and it's gonna be the first layer of the windows and the door. 
I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna use just black paint. So one of my tips is to take it and spin it on the side of your palette. That's gonna give you a nice pointy brush. You don't need it to be terribly perfect because we're gonna be doing like moldings and stuff on it, but um, I'm gonna have my door about halfway between um, this corner and this corner, and it's gonna be maybe about an inch wide, and I'm gonna bring it all the way to the ground and all the way up to the thatching. And we're gonna be doing a second step on the thatching, so don't worry about how perfect this door is when it meets um, that roof line or when it meets um, the ground because we're gonna be doing flowers and all kinds of stuff. So you just wanna make sure your um, left and right sides are vertical. Then I'm gonna do a little window over here. So same thing. If you wanted to have a little bit of perspective, you just wanna put that bottom edge of it down a little bit at an angle, whatever kind of angle um, you think would be appropriate to give it a little bit of perspective. And again, don't worry if your edges aren't perfect because we will in fact be doing moldings and stuff um, to clean up those edges. And then I'm gonna do two little windows over on this right hand side. And again, I'm gonna do it with a little bit of perspective. So I'll put maybe them at an angle. One of them's going through some really wet paint. That's all right. And then I'm going to do my vertical lines. So the top and the bottom can be at a little bit of a diagonal, but when you go to do the sides of it, you definitely want those to remain um, very vertical, otherwise it'll look like your um, little cottage is falling over. And I just went through a little bit of wet white paint, but that's okay. I'm just gonna add a little bit more black paint. Maybe the sun is shining into this window a little bit. And then we will be going on to the next step with this same brush. So once you get your first layer of your windows and doors, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is the third step to the cottage. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be finishing my door and my windows. I'm gonna be using green and white paint. You could certainly use whatever paint you want. You could have blue moldings, you could have red moldings, whatever you want. Um, so how I'm gonna do this, first tip, make sure that they're dry before you go on to this step. So what I'm gonna do, these are, in my opinion, just old wooden you know, moldings. They don't have to look perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my door and I'm gonna start with just green paint. And I am going to just take that green paint and just kind of do these little streaks going down my door. So it almost resembles like wood that's been painted um, and has this nice rustic look to it. My moldings, I want those to pop out a little bit more. I will put a door handle on there just for the record in a minute. I want my moldings to pop out a little bit more, so I'm gonna use green and white on my brush at the same time. And what I do is I do a T in the middle of my windows, and then I will go around the edges with, um, with the actual molding. So I go a little bit slower, than I did when I colored in the, um, uh, the first layer of them. So I just did my T, and now I'm gonna go ahead and do, oops, almost just dropped my wine there. Go ahead and do my moldings. And if you don't feel like they're popping out enough, add more color to it. Like I don't feel like you could see mine enough, so I just added a little bit more green to my brush. So that's gonna definitely help to make you see it more. And if they're not straight, don't worry about it. I have a shaky hand, so you're gonna see that I kind of brace myself on my um, canvas with my pinky when I'm doing these kind of lines. But again, not terribly concerned about these ones being perfect, simply because it is an old, rickety, hand-built, probably, hand-built cottage in the middle of a really beautiful place. So I don't think anybody's gonna care whether or not my moldings are straight. So I just did those. I'm gonna go down the edges. 
And then I have to put a little doorknob on my door so somebody can get in. The leprechauns need to open the have a doorknob to open the door, but I am gonna quickly wash and dry because I want a black doorknob. So I just washed and dried, and I think I'm gonna have this on the left-hand side. And then I'm gonna switch to my medium brush for the next step. So wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the, I think it's the fourth <laughs> step of the cottage, and it's gonna be finishing the thatched roof. We're gonna put one more layer on that. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, yellow, and white, and I'm gonna be using my medium brush. So my goal here is just to make it look like there's a little bit more sunshine on there. I'm gonna, in essence, be doing the same exact thing that I did for the first um, go around. And if you, I guess if you needed to also, you could, you know, do any additional touch-ups on the cottage at this point too. But I'm gonna start with all three colors, white, yellow, and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna just start by making sure my top edge is nice and cleaned up here because I saw that I had a little bump up top there. And once I've got that on there, then I'm just gonna kind of alternate my colors. I just used a little bit of yellow now maybe a little bit of brown. And you just wanna make it so it's alive, you know? Bring in some of that sunshine, make it, you know, make it look like hay or whatever they use for thatching. Again, not quite sure on that one, but. <laughs> So I'm adding extra white up at the top and, and you can see it's just coming alive. And I'm making sure that I bring it down to the edge, but if you can leave some of that darker thatching at the bottom, that will help to make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow underneath the edges of the, of the um, material that's being put down here and again, brown, yellow, and white. And you can see it looks way better at this point. It's got a lot more life to it. And I'm just kind of bringing it down. Almost looks like a little, um, like bangs on a little boy right now. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I see things in the paintings that I probably shouldn't see, but that definitely just got brought to my, my attention. Um, and then we have one more step to go. So once you've got your beautiful roof on here you can we're going to use the same brush so just wash and dry this medium brush and get ready sorry i want some more sunshine you can get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to be doing for the next step is the flowers um, i'm going to be using my medium brush and i'm using red yellow and white um, if you want to have pink flowers, you can drop the yellow, um, but I am definitely just going for some vibrant, kind of impressionistic flowers. These could be tulips or roses or poppies or, you know, whatever you imagine them to be. They're just, um, imaginary flowers for me. <laughs> They've been made up in my head. So what I'm going to do, they really are just polka dots. So the trick here is um, you can use all three colors at once, so red, yellow, and white. And the trick is to make them small at the top, and then as you get down towards the bottom of your canvas, that's when you want them to be bigger. So I've got all three colors on my brush at the same time, and I am just gonna kind of start making these little polka dots. You can have little clusters of them, you can have them in front of your building, that's gonna make it look like whoever lives there has, you know, been mindful of the beautiful flowers that are growing around their house, or maybe these are just wild flowers and they're just lucky. And then as I come down towards the bottom of my canvas, and you can really have as many or as few as you want. If you wanna have you know, a whole bunch over here, I like having them past the, um, the line of the hill into the sea. You know, that definitely gives some extra added dimension to it. But when I come down to the bottom, that's when I'm actually gonna be using more paint and pushing my brush 
harder. So that's going to give me a bigger flower. And again, you can have yours as bright or as light as you want. You can do little clusters. Make sure that you don't go systematically. So if you go systematically, what's going to happen is you're going to have one dot here, one dot here, one dot here, one dot here, and it's going to look a little unnatural. So if you can just kind of let go and just start making polka dots, making some bigger, some smaller, some clusters here and there, that's where it's going to end up looking a little bit more natural. You can do multiple layers. You can come back on top and put some more white in there, um, but just have fun. This is one of those steps where you know, it doesn't have to look exactly like, you know, pet, three petals of a, of a flower. You just have fun, disperse those colors as you want them to be. And then we do have one tiny little step left to go. Um, and it is going to be with your small brush. So once you get as many flowers on here as you want, you can wash and dry. Oh, no, we're going to use a small brush. So wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is the final step to any painting. So we're signing it. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint, but you could use whatever color you want. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think this one I'm gonna sign in the bottom right. I'm gonna be using black paint. I do my initials, um, but you could certainly do your first name. You could do the date. You could do it with a symbol. Whatever you want to identify your painting is totally up to you. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your Ireland landscape. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.